Hello and welcome to this uh, how-to video. I'm getting asked an awful lot of questions these days from people working with Ordnance Survey Master Map with building heights and how you can work with that in Civil 3D and Infoworks. My name is Ian Robinson, I'm the Infrastructure Technical Specialist located in the UK working for Grey Tech. I've put all my contact details on there so if anybody has any more questions or would like me to do any more videos then um, send them to me directly either via Twitter or my email address and as this is a how-to video I'm not going to be explaining an awful lot of what I've done I'm just going to show you how to work with this data and the results um, if you would like training on it then please just contact our office so the question I get asked is how do we go from this which is a raw Ordnance Survey master map file in geographical markup language GZ is a compressed version of GML and a CSV file which is the uh, building height data. In this uh, presentation I'm also going to be using the ground data in uh, ASC file format. Again this is raw direct from the Ordnance Survey. It's a 5 meter grid and a ECW of the aerial photography of the area as well. So how do we go from that lot to this? And that's what we're going to be doing now. The products we're going to be using is Civil 3D, but of course if you've got AutoCAD Map 3D then all the functions I'm going to be using in this how-to are available to you as well as Map 3D is built into Civil 3D and I'm not going to be using any additional functionality. So let's get straight on to it and let's open up Civil 3D. Uh, I guess the first thing I'm going to do is probably go to the Geospatial Planning and Analysis tab. Um, really you don't need to do that if you don't want to if you know what the um, let me just open up the map workspace okay so the first task is in um, civil 3d and what I'll do is I will format the CSV file uh, basically it's got OSGB at the beginning of the toy to the topographical ID and the um, data in the GZ file and the GML file is as, has three zeros in there. So I'll just do a control H, find all OSGBs and replace them with one, two, three zeros. Replace all, jobs are good, and close that down and save. So that's that done. Next thing is we need to format this GZ format into a spatial format. So we'll just uh, import it. Map import find the OSGB which is in my folder here there it is okay okay I'm not going to explain the tables and everything as I mentioned I'm just going to pick the relevant table um, if anybody needs training on this let me know and I'll bring the data in bringing the data in is absolutely vital if you forget to do that nothing will work from this moment on um, I won't let you in city watch me bring in nearly 30,000 ob objects, I'll just pause you. And there we are, it's like time travel this isn't it? So 27,650 objects, it's just processing them now. Remember it's bringing in um, polygons and a data table as well, so every polygon has uh, data in the background, so it's it's bigger file than you would expect to see in a CAD uh, format. I haven't formatted it, it's going to come in on a single layer, so if I just zoom extents you'll see that it's just a, a blob of data I'll pick something there we are pick something there's the data in the background man-made buildings etc so now I want to export that map export I'll stick it in my um, building heights and I'll do it as an SDF file which is quite easy so I'll call it OS master map um, and I'll put today's date on 15.10.02 okay so you can see that's happening uh, select everything yes because we've only brought one thing in feature classes this is absolutely vital make sure you uh, uh, create feature classes and import the object data uh, they're only polygons so we don't need to bring everything else in lines arcs and circles etc um, attributes attributes there's no options that we needed on here it's all already on the OS grid so I'm happy with that click OK and again I won't wa let you watch uh, uh, watch me exporting so we'll do a bit of time travel oh I wish the real, real world was like this that'd be great wouldn't it 
Uh, there we are, so I don't need that file anymore, I don't even need to save it, we've done the export. Open up a blank drawing, find that file we've just done, there it is. Uh, we can use FDO on this, we don't need to uh, import it. Zoom extents, and there's our data, and then we have our data table with all the information in. So what we now need to do is link that to the uh, building height attributes and we do that with ODBC. So I'll just create an ODBC link, 64 bit, that'll do. And we'll add a new one, it's a CSV file. So I'll finish, give it a name, OS, master map, building heights, LBY, BH, and I'll put today's out, 151002. Uh, we need options and we don't want to use the current directory, we want to select C drive, building heights, there it is, so I'm happy with that. And we need to tell it it's a CSV file. And then we also need to define the format because at the moment CSV, each table doesn't have a format. And because we've put three zeros at the beginning of the um, attribute for OS Topo Toid, it's going to ignore them if it thinks that it's a uh, number. So we can convert it to a number later on. What we'll do is we'll tell it that it's a character. Oh, look at that, it's already picked up a character, which is handy. Um, then we've got um, the absolute uh, the absolute building heights and the relative building heights. So it's the relative ones I'm happy with. So you've got to make sure that, I'll just redo that. Yeah, I thought that would happen. Character 255 and modify that. And also, I'm going to make sure that that is. Um, I, um, I could actually make it. A, a, I'm going to put it as a character. Um, reasons for that is that it kind of forces it in, in the ODBC link. Comma separated. ANSI happy with that. Modify. Mm. Click OK. You may get this problem here. Don't worry too much. It's probably worth just double checking that it has picked character, which it has. That's fine, I'm okay with that, so we'll ignore that error message. Uh, there it is. So we've plonked it in there. Click OK. Data, connect to data, select an ODBC link. I'll call this, you don't have to name it, OS Master Map. Building Heights. Pick your source, which is the one we've just created with today's date on it. Test the connection. There's no username or password with uh, that. Uh, you do need to tell it which property is the unique ID so the toid will do that connect to the data jobs are good we're in excellent so now all you do is you right click here and create a join if you don't know anything about database joins then again speak to us here's our uh, building heights so that's the uh, that's when we right clicked so that's the OS master map and then that's the building heights and then all we need to do is tell it which column in the data matches which column in the building height data and if you keep only the left hand side of the records it'll only pull back things that are relevant i.e buildings there we are fantastic so uh, that's good so now I need to export that with that data uh, again you can do it to an SDF file or an SQL light file I'll do it to an SQL light file in this case uh, we'll stick it in the same folder which was building heights there we are, SQL Lite, and I will write building heights on there. BH will do, just so we know it's got the building heights in there. If I look at any of these buildings, you see, there we are, there's the building. And if I scroll to the right, there's the building heights. Brilliant. That was easy, wasn't it? So let's uh, close that down. Don't need that. And let's open up InfoWorks. Right, we've got InfoWorks open. There's nothing in it at the moment. Let's just open up our uh, data sources so you can see there's nothing in there at the moment. And let's bring in some stuff. So here is the data from there. So all the master map data. So we said we were going to put in some imagery first, didn't we? So I'll just stick that ECW in there. There's no configuration needed on ECWs. Um, it's just an image, so there's nothing we need to do. Just, just bring it in. Excellent, so there's our image, it's flat. 
all we need now is the terrain I've got some 5 meter ASCII grid again OS master map stuff uh, you do need to configure this slightly I mean again everything works okay but I'm going to clip it to the image so it's it's a bigger data set than that so I'll just close and refresh now my image is in 3D fantastic let's stick the buildings in so I'll put it in that building height folder and there it is that SQL light one with today's date on it drag and drop it in just tell it that it's buildings uh, we could describe it with any of them data fields that we had um, which might be useful in this instance I'm not going to bother but the roof height I need to tell it which one of these is there's a slight quirk in that my header for my data table is now too long because I've left all the um, the original file in and the new file it joins the two together so I don't know which one it is so I'll just pick one and then use my up and down arrow key to find relative h2 so um, relative h2 is basically to the eaves uh, of the house so you've got maximum um, and then relative and minimum of the roof height you've also got the same with absolute so that's from um, zero from uh, sea level uh, so that's good so that's done on the geolocation tab it's on the British National Grid which I'm happy with on the source I want to drape them on the surface and I also have got more buildings potentially than I have um, for my site so I'll just clip it to the model extents we could add tool tips in there which would be quite nice but we won't bother at this stage I'll show you that another time what we'll do is we'll add some user data though because what we could do here which is quite clever uh, we could say right they'll put all the buildings in with flat roofs and what we want to do is pick maybe all the small buildings and give them a pitch roof we could do that that might be quite nice so uh, the ordnance survey very kindly give us a value a calculated area value so we could use that to say show me all the small buildings which would be quite nice close and refresh and there's our buildings and they're all in by the correct height according to the ordnance survey uh, oh, I'll tell you what would be nice if we add in some um, random styles on there. So if I go to my style rules, there's no style rules out the box, so let's create one. You could be quite clever here. I'll just call this one random, 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 random. There we go. Okie dokie. Double click it, edit it. it. You can put expressions in, so you could say, look, if, it's, if the data in the background was telling you that it's a... Um, a commercial building for example then you could say well if it's a commercial building put this style on it if it's a residential put this style on it and stuff like that uh, what I'm going to do is something a bit simpler than that I'm just going to randomize it but I'm going to put a bias on it so um, I would like to add in oh I'm doing it for barriers can you see that what an idiot let me just cancel that and delete that I want to do it for buildings don't I click buildings there we are oh we've already got one get rid of it add a new one call it random random there we go double click it and add in new rules so most of our houses are kind of bricky in color so I will maybe put um, a 7 factor on there 7 out of 10 and then a lot of them are white so I'll put in uh, maybe a factor of 2 on that one and then uh, have we got anything really nice Brick, marble, stone, go for that one just because I quite liked it. And click OK. Let's commit and run them rules. Brilliant. So there we are, we've got different coloured buildings with a bias for uh, a brick colour. Uh, that one there doesn't look great. You know, these big ones look great like that, but that one there, you might want to change that one. So for the odd one, just go to your style palette and then pick uh, whatever. Uh, style you want for your building, just literally drag and drop it onto the roof and it'll uh, style it accordingly. And there we are, there's a slightly better style for that. Okay, so let's have a look at the properties. That's a, obviously a small residential building, they all look a bit a bit flat, don't they? So let's just have a look at the properties of that. So you can see there the calculated area value. 49 and the roof height at 5 meters so let's say if we selected all the buildings where the roof height is below I don't know let's go two stories will be kind of under six meters three stories let's say under three stories sort of nine meters everything under nine meters but also small so that's probably about as big as I want to go this building here 
big as I want to go, how big is that, 600, how big is these ones here, let's say 300, so what we'll do is we'll create a filter first, so if we pick this button up here, we get our model explorer, let's do our buildings and we'll create a subset of buildings. Now, remember right at the beginning when I brought the data in, I said it's a CSV file, it has no idea whether the data in that table is a text or a character or whatever. And we said, well, we're going to force it to be a character so that it adds them zeros in and it kind of forces it through on the ODBC link. What we now need to do is, um, this is actually based on the schema within Infoworks. So the user data and description and things like that, it's not expecting a number. So what we can do is we can say, let's go and do a function and a conversion to a double. And what we'll do is we'll convert the property which was under common user data. So we're going to convert it to user data and say select everything below 300 square meters. We can also do an and property as well. And we can say okay and now roof height is a is a roof height is a number. So that's obviously going to have to be a number. So all we need to do is go to building and find roof height and say pick everything below, uh, we said 9 metres, I'm going to go 8 metres, like so. Click OK. And in that selection set now are not these tall buildings, not these large buildings, but all the smaller buildings. Um, and we can put pitch roof on them. Just go to the properties, they're in the selection set. Go up to the properties, um, put a slope on, 35. I tell you what, while we're at it, we'll put a um, material on. Where are we? Roof material. Let's do something. I don't know what Spanish tileish, something like that. I don't know. Let's add one of them. Not do that. And there we are. There's our pitched roofs on our small buildings, and our flat roofs on our big buildings. Nice, eh? Quick and easy. Um, if anybody has any questions, as I mentioned, let me know. Just uh, uh, give us a shout on email. There's my email address again, or you can phone the office, or you can contact us via greatech.co.uk. Um, I'll leave my contact details up for a minute. Um, just give us a shout if you want me to show any more videos. Thank you very much indeed.